record the effort for doing something. Oh wait, go. Oh, you're recording. Oh, you're you're you're, you're monologuing to the audience. Hey, it's been forever since we've done a a, a gone roger just to or even any of the videos. A lot of it's kind of busy with. Lord of the Rings was insane there you go. Let's get of a some. drop or a, of a release, and now we have Commander Masters, which is just <sighs> a lot of work of matching orders and collecting money and everything. Yes. So, anyway, I haven't done videos for a while, and I've been to the lake, which I thought would make a cool uh, video because I do get asked this question quite a bit by people coming in, or even people I had one on, on Discord. Uh, ask me what kind of board games are good for like casual vacation stuff like that so i have the perfect answer for you coming up shortly before bruce wants to come in the camera what bruce and just yeah we're still we're still chugging along here at the store summers are kind of slowish at the store but there's always you know lots of work to be done and we've been out and about what did we do yesterday bruce we go fishing did you go fishing you just want to be on camera water? and, and be lazy. has been at lake powell for a week did you go swimming and do you want to go fishing he loved it. So you were kind of nervous at first on the boat, but then you just absolutely loved it. You were the best kayak fisher ever. You You're went so good. So much better than Chloe. Really? Chloe's been Did replaced. you do that good, buttons? Yep. Yeah, you sit down on the kayak. And oh, really? Fishes. I'm a good, good boy. boy. I'm a good, good boy. Good boy, buttons. Do you want some chicken? <laughs> do you really want some chicken? And now here comes Chloe limping away. Oh! Getting right. old, Miss Chloe. You old Chloe? So look how much weight Chloe's lost. We're active. Yep. Anyway, All right, what board games a, you got? That's a little bit of the, the store update too. We're still still here, still doing stuff, still what, Zach? You're what? Some stuff, but. I don't know. I don't anyway, know what to comment. So back to the uh the, the topic in hand. Oops. I need to finish my mess. Um, noisy in this room. But here are the games I took. Well, actually I've, I've added this a little bit because I did take some years to be in play. This is kind of my essential list of board games that I take on vacation. So this is, this is I just took this entire bucket to Lake Powell. And what I like about these type of games is they appeal to both gamers and non-gamers. So these are games I can take with my family and then everyone will enjoy them. And same thing at the board game groups. These are the type of games that just perfectly hit that sweet spot between. Um, of course, at board game group, we'll play like more heavy games, more, more meaty games, games that, that gamers uh, like, but these are all the quick, casual games. None of these last more than, you know, 30 minutes. And they're still <coughs> engaging and fun, and they are, you know, some of my favorite. They, these are the tried, tested, and true. No matter what group I'm going to, no matter who I'm trying to introduce board games, any of these games will work out great. So, uh, we'll start right, with the first right. one. I thought you said this one lasted more than... No. No, 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 no. Oh, you guys just couldn't figure it out. With, no, oh, no, no, no. No, no, no wait, wait, wait. We didn't what? like it at first. Oh, we didn't, we oh. Doing it correctly. oh, you're talking about that. The, isn't there one that's all like weird numbers? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't we'll know. We'll throw this up here. Oh, sorry, all right. I keep going. over. So the first one, which is ultra casual, is Suro. So Suro is great for any ages. In fact, little kids can play it. Basically, Suro is a stay on the board uh, as long as possible game. And so each turn, you are placing a tile on the board and then you have to move your uh, token, your guy, uh, with the path that it creates. And eventually you're going to run into people or you are going to fall off the map and whoever stays on the map wins. It's just a very, very quick game. It's engaging and fun and like I said, it appeals to little kids. You can play with little kids, they'll enjoy it. Like I play it with my you know, four-year-old nephew. He was playing when yeah, he was three my nephews and enjoying are it. And, and it's even kind of fun for older people. So Suro, that one's a really, really great game that I recommend. I don't recommend any of the expansions to it because they're not as good. No, I think they try to reinvent the wheel at that point. Much. Yeah, and it's just, just the basic ways uh, good to go. Next up on this one is Point Salad. Like this one with Point Salad really ticks me off because they put like a 14 plus on here. What the heck? Yeah, this game is as simple, simple. as simple gets. It is just the, the, the quintessential Point Salad game. So Point Salad is a, a, a reference, a terminology of games that just want to score as many points as possible. Like yours, everything's just scoring points. So on your turn, you either take two vegetables from the vegetable market or take a point card that scores your vegetables. For example, like this one here says you score eight points for every uh, three cabbage you have. And so you just go through the deck of cards pretty quick. They're fast games. It's what? fun to be played over a series of games and yep. write down your scores and see well, who does the best. Fun with this one is they're all random too. Yeah. And then you can card count as well because you know how many pieces yes, are yes, in there. Yes, yes, there is. So there's tons number. of strategy, but it doesn't work because you have no idea what's yes. actually coming yes. up next. It drives you crazy. Well, and that's what's good because people yep. people that uh, want to be like this like overthinking games, like, oh, I really want to strategize, you can do it. 
but people just wanted to be like, oh, I just want to play and see yeah. what happens, and they'll still win games too. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's a really fun, engaging game. Point Salad. It's it's a just a fast deck of cards. I really highly recommend Point Salad. Do not look at this for I do not know why they did fourteen plus on it. No. It's a five plus. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's a, a math. If you can do math, you're good to go. If you don't, like little kids can just match, match vegetables. vegetables. Yeah, it's, true. It's easy. Get two of these. Yep. Um. So then the next kind of category we put is any of the clevers. So I like them all, and there's actually a fourth one coming out. So these are roll and writes. So a roll and write is where you roll dice and mark something off on your, your score pad. And so what I like about uh, the Clevers, they have a lot of like wombo combos that can happen. Like you score, you cross this off on your board, it crosses something else on your board. And you just do this over a series of rounds, and then you use whoever has the most points is who wins. And like the different colors do different things. Um, and what's cool about the clevers is all the dice you don't use, your opponents get to use one of them at the end of the turn. So there's a little bit of strategy of like not leaving your opponents with a good dice. Mm -hmm. And these are just insanely that's, fun that's games. A good game. Look how look how beat these. How many how many hours Kevin has sit here just this playing one. with himself with that? Yeah, back I, I've there. been playing with myself with this this top twice as clever. Yeah, I wanted to like break the, it. It's one to six, right, players? Five. One to five. Mm -hmm. Okay. One to five for this. So those ones are good. Speaking of kind of in that same genre, instead of roll and rights, are things called flip and rights. So flip and rights are where you have a deck of cards and you flip over a card and then you use that card. So this particular one is using Tetris. So you, you flip over a Tetris piece and then you have these cards that you want to fill them out based upon what card is flipped over. And there's little bonuses and stuff that are on the cards. Chloe, shush. And then it's just a quick, easy um, game with that as Chloe interrupts our video. Chloe, come here. Um, the next one is racing games. This is my favorite racing game. This one actually replaced Camel Up. I think Camel Up's a lot easier to play, but this one's more fun. This one's called Long Shot. All right, so we <laughs> got interrupted by customers, which is a good thing, not a bad thing, but we moved into this quieter room too, because I don't know how bad the fan was. In the other room, we are professional here at Gunner Games, but let's talk about Long Shot. Uh, Long Shot is a racing game that I think has replaced my other favorite one, which was called Camel Up. This one is a bit more of a strategic game than Camel Up because it does require you to figure out where to mark off your stuff on your card. So you're going to be rolling dice. The active player will go first and you're going to mark off uh, certain things on your scorecard, which allows you to kind of manipulate the game. So if you mark off uh, like a jersey, it allows you to uh, whenever a particular horse moves, another horse moves. So anyway, this it's just a quick racing game where you're rolling dice, moving horses, and trying to get the most money at the end of the game. So the long shot is a great game. I was very surprised by this because it's it takes a lot in this day and age to like knock up. Uh, so this is my top ten of games that I take to, to games, and this one did replace Camel Up for me. Uh, is a long shot. It goes up to eight players too. So this is one that if you have a lot of players, this one's good to have. So there is long shot, and next up is a, another one that is utilizing the Tetris uh, mechanic, which is called Project L. And Project L is also very similar to silver and gold as far as you're going to be taking Tetris pieces and filling out little things on your um, your tableau, your little, these pieces here. And once you, f you finish a piece, it actually gives you a reward piece. And so you just start with two pieces. You start with like a, a little square and a, a, a rectangle. And then you're going to try to build up so you have enough of these uh, Tetris pieces to actually fill out your puzzles efficiently. And you can see these are all, I call these games all in like the splendor uh, uh, type of, of genre because you're starting out with something little and trying to build up an engine to then score points or finish off uh, more and more pieces to score points in the game. So Project L is a really good one. It's again, that hits that for perfect sweet spot of, of casual and people that want to be a little you know, strategic and competitive. Um, and then again, in this genre is, is Century Golem. So all the centuries are good. Uh, in my opinion, this is the best one because it's kind of a deck builder. And another game where you're trying to buy these golems here at the end, which score points. And how you do that is by collecting these gems uh, to then buy the golems. And how you collect the gems is by these cards. You start off with these two basic cards, one upgrades gems and one just gives you two yellow gems. And so on your turn, you can either play a card or you can recruit a merchant, which will give you gems or trade for gems. And you're trying to trade a lot through the gems to then buy these golems. Quick, fast game again. Very, very fun. Never gets old. That's another theme that I want to talk about all of these games is the replayability of any of these games that I have here is insane. Like, I've played all of these games so many times over the course of the years of having them, and they never get old. They're always, like, fresh, always fun. 
you're saying something about this? Just make sure you read the rules, because you can use your engine cards as many times as you can, right? Yes, we were playing that way uh, oh, man. for a long time until someone pointed out. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Well, my problem is, like, I usually learn games because people teach me. And then, so I'm like, okay. And then I never, like, read the rule book. And then, then I end up one day, like, actually reading the rule book. I'm like, wow. Do people actually read rule books when they... At least this is the people that teach me games because yeah, that was something that was conveniently left, left out or people just didn't figure Probably out. Probably the best game ever. Azul? So, yeah. so Zach thinks this is the best game ever. Which as is long Azul. as Kevin doesn't get people to gang up with him and stop me from doing stuff. Yeah, but you can't just let people have free reign on... Anyway, Zach's... You are derailing my video as uh, usual. Why not? Uh, so the Azul... Azuls are... Again, there's three or four of these now. There's four four Azul's now. This is our favorite one. This one's called the Summer Pavilion. I think it's just the first one's a little too basic. The second one's a little too chaotic. The third one I think is the perfect balance. I haven't played the fourth one, so I can't give a, a uh, yep. analysis on the fourth one, but a lot of people that played the fourth one hated it. And but So Azul Summer Pavilion, super strategic on, this is a tile drafting game, so on your turn you'll be taking one color from one of these discs, and then you're going to be using those colors to then place on your, your board. Uh, different, each spot requires a different amount of those colors to go on it and then you're going to score points based upon if you filled out colors at the end of the game uh what when you place a tile if it touches another tile you get points and there's like these little bonuses you can get if you if you surround these statues you get a statue which gets you bonus tiles and azul is just another fast fun tile drafting game pick up tiles place them on your board and rinse and repeat until the game is done and super super fun game zach loves this one right this yeah is, I like this your that favorite one. game that's good it's up there um, and then, of course, we have Splendor. I have played this game, <laughs> who knows at this point. So I go over to my, my friend's house, my childhood best friend and his family, and we play Splendor every Sunday. And we play it for hours. Like, I'll bring board games over. I'll bring big buckets of board games over. And maybe we'll play one game of a board game I bring over. And then it's like, let's just play Splendor the last night. This particular one's Marvel Splendor because I think Marvel Splendor is a little more updated. And just the, the balance is better than regular Splendor. Uh, you can get some expansions for regular Splendor that, that keeps it fresh, but this is a game that, like, it's kind of like any, like, game, you, it, the, re the replayability of Splendor is amazing, because it's just, you can keep playing game after game after game, it always feels fresh. And so Splendor is a classic where you just take two uh, gems, or three gems per turn, or you can take two of the same color, or you can reserve one, uh, a card, later on. And these cards here... Once you buy them, these cards up here, they act as a static gem that you always have towards purchasing more. So eventually you're trying to purchase these more expensive cards because there'll be, there'll be cards that are worth three, three points or four points or five points, and you're trying to get 16 points. And by doing it, they're, they're, the, the higher valued cards cost a lot of gems. And so to get there, you need to buy a lot of lower end cards that then add to your value to go up. Um, this Splendor is amazing. It's just, the, again, this is the game I played by far the most. There hasn't been a game even close to how much I play this, mainly because uh, if there's new players coming in, I'll introduce them to Splendor. I play a lot with like Zach and a, another buddy of ours. We played some last night with Splendor. And well, we you know Talmage. They, oh, yeah, they know Talmage. They do know Talmage. They used to do the Gotten Rogers here. And then I played at my buddy's house. And again, look at this box. It is just hash. The funny, funny fact about this one, so my friends that I go play this every Sunday, they're on their third copy now. Splendor. I told him just to sleeve this, this thing. Yeah. I got mine sleeved, but the cards got so worn down, and you don't shuffle with this much. You just all you do is place it on the board. They got so worn down just from people picking up, and and they uh, they're on their third copy of of Marvel Splendor because the same thing. Their box is all destroyed and and ragged, and wow. just, instead of like yeah, you know, just goes and buys a new one. And then there is a two-player version of Splendor, which is also super fun, called Splendor Duel. I'll have to do a review on this one if you're looking for a good two-player game absolutely uh highly recommend the splinter duel that's why i call this my top 10 because the clevers and the splinter duel kind of fit in the same category and last but definitely definitely not uh, least is cascadia now cascadia is probably the more complex game out of all the games here but it's also super easy and uh to teach and super fun as the game goes on all you're trying to do is you're trying to build your own biome your own ecosystem and at the start of the game you have these cards you always have a fox a hawk a bear an elk and a fish and they, they'll have they'll want different um ways that they're placed on your map like the fish always want to be in in these lines but then how you score them will be different every game the bears usually want to be either by themselves or in families uh the elk want to be in like these big clusters 
Um, the foxes want to be by themselves and by different animals, and the hawks usually want to be spread out. And so you're trying to pick up these tiles, and then the biomes you make are also important, because if you have like the biggest forest at the end of the game, you get, you get points for that. And so it's just strategically picking up tiles, placing it on your biome, and you just play until all the tiles are gone, and then score the points based upon how your animal is configured at the end of the game. And again, it's, this is kind of a table hog. It requires a lot of space, so it might not be the best game to take camping. Or, like, again, I took these to Lake Powell in a houseboat, and we had plenty of room on the table there. Um, but super, super fun game. It's quick. It's, 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 it's very engaging. And it's one of those, you know, like I said, I, I don't know. I don't know if this would actually be the, the heaviest game here that I have as far as complexity. But again, it's, it's still anyone can play this. It's not something that, you, you know, you need board games specific people. So that's what I have for you. I thought I was just, I'm, I'm going to try to do these little topics every once in a while, I think, for the, the Gone On Games channel. Because I want to keep continue uh, to, to uh, produce some content to keep people going until we can get things organized to where we can start uh, producing some more meaty videos. So if you enjoy these videos, let us know in the comment section below if you want me to actually do more in-depth board game reviews. Uh, we're still selling board games quite a bit. We got a lot of tourists always come in and buy board games. And yeah, these are by far my best sellers too. Sweet. I don't know if they're the best sellers because people actually enjoy them or I just push them. No, so we only much, sell stuff when you're happy with it. Yeah, yep. I'm a, I'm a pretty good cheerleader one. Um, huh, I'm Bruce? You're in your vent? Wait, Bruce? Do you want to say bye? Was per Bruce purchased because I was happy with him? I no. didn't want you. I was against the Bruce. It wasn't my fault. And I it thought Zach was just trying to tick me off by getting another dog. But we love Bruce. Bruce, Bruce is awesome. Come it's here. not my fault. Come he here. came over and spent two weeks in my lap and in my jacket. So he's a cutie. He's Should the bestest fishing? boy ever. Should we go fishing? All I right, guys. So that's what we have for today. Again, if Bye. you enjoy these, we'll we'll do some more in-depth board game uh, things. If you are featuring these board games, are usually pretty easy to get um, at distributor price. I can get you from them. And just shoot me a, a message on Discord. Thanks for watching.